Wish you were one of those influencers with raving fans who binge on your every word, consume all your content, buy everything you have to sell and demand even more? Then stay tuned while Authority Magazine columnist and BuzzFeed contributor Tracy Hazard shares strategies, tips, and tactics from top videocasters, podcasters, authors, and social influencers on creating that bingeable factor. Now, let's join Tracy as she explores how to rise above all the digital noise with The Binge Factor. Hey everyone, welcome to The Binge Factor. I am excited to bring you a great new podcast and podcasters that I met recently at the event we did with Athlete Times Media and the Network Advisory down in Miami. So we did this pre-Super Bowl event and I met these two guys there and they have a great show that you're going to just love. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's called The White Tiger Podcast. So I have Craig Craig Casaletto and Asante Cleveland, and they bring sports, mindset, success to their podcast. And they interview great sports players. They've interviewed Olympians, um, NFL greats, obviously. Um, and they have a really interesting show because they're not just talking sports. Like there's a lot of shows out there that just talk sports, but they're really talking about creating that winning mindset, achieving success. But more importantly, they're also talking about the professional stories about victory, defeat, and what can really crush you right? What can crush your goals? And I think that that's so true of all of us here as entrepreneurs and as, as podcasters, there's a lot that can crush our goals. So that's why I'm super excited to bring them to you today. So I've got Asante and Craig from the White Tiger Podcast. Guys, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. You know, one of the things that I've loved about your show and your approach is that you guys are very humble. And I'm going to say that that's a rarity in, from many of the sports people I've met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see, look, they're so humble right now. They're kind of just chuckling and not answering, right? But you know what? It's, it's your strength. Right off the bat here, and I don't normally do this. I normally wait till, towards the end to talk about it. But I think that's your binge factor. It's your personalities and your humbleness and your gratefulness that makes me want to listen to your show again and again. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that too. I think that's something that we truly tried to be intentional about when it comes to podcasting, as far as you know, keeping our listeners in mind. And it's it's you know, this is not. I don't think it was ever about us. It was all about just uh, delivering back, you know, giving back. Well, and you know, that's it's so interesting because your show is set up this way. Your show is set up. Your names are not like your names and pictures are not in your cover art, which is very rare in that, in the sort of market and area you play in. Um, you, you, that intentionalness is coming across in every little detail of your show. Yeah. appreciate that. Well, I'm glad it's working. <laughs> I think it does because then it makes it about your guest and about the audience and what we're going to get from it. Yeah. That's always been the main goal is to bring on guests that their stories will provide values and our job is just to help facilitate a way for them to give their stories so that our audience can really hear something that will resonate with whatever they're going through personally. Uh, and you guys, do you hear the great radio voices? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they've got that going on there as well. So wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, let's tell your story. I'd love to know how the two of you connected and decided to start this podcast. Wow, do you wanna, do you wanna start this? <laughs> so, well, so I met Craig through a friend who had a social media marketing company and Craig was already working with him and I had just started working with him. Uh, I had was in limbo with football and Craig and our friend were in Starbucks actually talking about I would be a good guest on his podcast. And as fate would have it, I was actually in the Starbucks at the same time that they were there talking about it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So we did our first episode and this was when I was figuring out if I was going to play football or not still. And I actually announced my retirement on the podcast. Ooh, wow. You gave them quite a, uh, quite a coup. <laughs> I did. But it was the fact that Craig gave me the platform to do that. Uh, it was so therapeutic and... I just wanted to keep coming back on. <laughs> and, and it was just like very serendipitous as people have told us, like 
to actually talk about having Asante on. And I'm totally a believer of things do happen for a reason. I felt like that day happened for a reason. And, uh, you know, I look at it now and where, what we're doing and, uh, you know, who, who we're impacting and a lot of it uh, to be a little selfish, a lot of it is enjoyable for us because we're students when we come on these podcasts and we learn from our guests just as much as we like to deliver that same information to our listeners. But yes, it was great to connect with Asante and things have been just like growing and, and from so many perspectives, it's been, it's been really great. Well, and you know, you guys have such a diverse background. So, you know, Craig, you're a former police detective, you know, Asante, you're a former tiger. <laughs> so, you know, you're, you know, uh, you, Miami, Florida is, you know, where we all met there, but that's kind of where you also, you know, played a lot. So, yeah. you know, you got, you were kind of like at home there. I, that's what I noticed when I met you there. You were kind of like, oh, I know all these people. I, you know, I'm at home. So you, you kind of bring the best of both for each other to balance each other out. Yeah, it was, we have different backgrounds, but what we realize is that we also have a lot of similarities going through Craig's transition of go, creating the podcast from being a police detective and then my transition from playing in the NFL to now figuring out what the next steps were going to be and just falling into this podcasting space has just been just really serendipitous for me. Did you have a plan for it from a business perspective? No. And you know what? I think that's kind of where we're a little bit different than the norm. I think a lot of people who have podcasts maybe are working on something else to where they're tying the podcast into. And I never felt that was one thing for us. I think the one thing that's always been a constant is the fact that we just really enjoy connecting with people. And the value lies in the information from our guests and our experience. And so and it's about providing, you know, for me in the law enforcement field, it was about continuing that service aspect of what I used to do on a different platform into a new community and Asante from leaving a football community and finding a new community. So it was really all about, um, about giving back and never really had like a business side, let's say to promote or, or a program to promote or anything like that, which made it unique. Yeah, absolutely. Cause then it's, it's in its genuineness, it's service. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and I think that really comes across in your show as well. So now you've interviewed, you've done like well over 60 episodes. You've um, almost gotten to a year. Congratulations. Um, you know, that's a big deal. So is there, has there been any like funny mishaps, really interesting interviews, things that you enjoyed that you'd love to share a story with us? To Miami? Yeah, well, <laughs> so, so Miami was a, big, was a big deal for us because it really kind of like melded a bunch of different, it put us in a place where really is our sweet spot, which was the sports aspect, the sports industry aspect, um, people that are in transition from athletics into, let's say, an entrepreneurial space. So it was like our sweet spot with people. So it was great. But, you know, the interesting part about in Miami was, is that, uh, and Asante knows this, is like the weather and the unpredictability of your environment. And, and this podcast row thing that we did, um, you know, we were doing these episodes outside. And uh, the one thing we could not forecast for, nor that I have any <laughs> idea would, that we'd ever have to wrestle with, was the idea of our place that we were doing the podcast getting pretty much... Uh, uh, taken over by bugs. Yeah. <laughs> That's because we're from Southern California and we really yeah. don't know what bugs are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, you know, it made me realize like, you know what, always expect the unexpected, especially when it comes to podcasting, you, you just have to be prepared for, and for, you never know what's going to happen. And to be honest, so what happened was, is that we were doing these podcasts outside and which comes with challenges as it is. And then on top of it, there was like a gnat infestation. Swarms, Swarms of gnats were pretty much in the area of, of where we were. And so we we're interviewing these great guests and these gnats are on their face. They're in their, <laughs> they're up their it's nose. Gross. <laughs> I'm itching just thinking about it. <laughs> First time. So, you know, if there's anyone that's a podcaster listening and you're like, you think about all the different things you have to forecast for, you think about like, all right, you see your guests getting uncomfortable by these gnats falling on their face. And you're like, all right, now what I wanted to maybe ask them another question. Now, maybe I shouldn't ask them another question because they look uncomfortable. Yeah. Maybe Let's get this done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now it's time to wrap it up. So it got to a point um, where we were doing the majority of the interviews sitting down and we actually had to do the interview standing up because it gave us a little bit more freedom from the, 
<laughs> shift around, shake a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a funny video of that. We'll show you them shaking off some bugs. So make sure you check social media. Make sure you check the post at thebingefactor.com and we'll make sure that you see that because it's pretty funny. But, you know, this is a thing that I found there is that, first off, you guys weren't divas about it at all. You were just like, this is great. You know, we're, we're, we're out here. This is where we our location. Because our option was record outside or record inside with this massive echo. And so that wasn't gonna be good for your show because then your listeners would be like, I can't, I can't take it and I can't listen to this anymore. So, but I was really impressed by all the guests. None of them complained. We didn't get a single yeah. complaint. I was like, I mean, it's, we're not, you know, it's not like it was the location and they had a bug infestation. It was like all of Miami had a yeah. bug infestation. And so, you know, but they were so gracious about it. They were so good, good humored. I, I was really impressed by that. Yeah. And you know, Tracy, just to add to that, I think it was a testament to the people that were there, you know, and I think it just, it just gives credit to the, all those people that were there that were giving back and, and talking and were on the panels and, and were part of the podcast were just like, despite all of that, they were just like, yeah, so gracious with wanting to come on and talk and share their story. So yeah, definitely kudos to them. Yeah. Yeah. Two. Yeah. So you had some great interviews there, but I mean, who, who have you interviewed that really like touched you personally, that really made you feel, wow, this is why I do this show. Wow. Well, for me, we've had um, a friend of mine, uh, Ricky Miller. He is the CEO of a vodka company called Carbonati, but his stories of he was dealing with cancer at the time where he was beginning his uh, his company so he would go to chemo and then get out and go to a business meeting and just his resilience and then his stick to itiveness really resonated with me personally so we've had a lot of guests with just truly inspiring stories but that was the one that just really sticks out to me the most yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting when you get into 60 plus episodes and, and a majority of them are people you've interviewed. It's so hard to say one because mm -hmm. there's so many gems that you get out of everyone because everyone has a unique story. And that's the really cool part about it is that, you know, people that are listening can really kind of resonate with people's stories on their journey to getting to this destination that they're, they're at at that point when you talk to them. And, you know, you can really resonate to going through the struggles and so on. So everybody has different circumstances, but there's so many different things you can pick out from their story that are just so like empowering and just really, really a ton of value. You know, it, it's interesting that you chose in sort of your plan of how you were going to interview to dive into the, I'm going to call it the hardships, right? The things that crush you as you put it in your, in your, in your description. That um, says something about the two of you. So it, has that been your own experience that it is overcoming those things that might crush you that make success? Yeah, you know, the one thing that stands out for me, Tracy, is I think a lot of day, in today's day and age, everyone sees the destination, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's on social media or whatever it is, everyone sees where they're at now or this picture of where they're at now, but they don't see the journey. And, and we just talked about this in a podcast we did. It's, there's so much value behind that journey that you never really see. And uh, I think that's one of the things that really stands out for us. And, and we're on that journey. And that's another difference between our podcast and maybe a lot of others is that you have a lot of people that have success in their industries and have had a following and they're telling their stories based on their success as an entrepreneur, as an athlete or whatever. We're in the process of going through it now. So we're sharing these vulnerable slash uh, learning experiences with our audience, yeah. you know, because our audience is learning at the same time we're learning. So it's a really unique perspective um, that we kind of have with this podcast. So, yeah, I think that's really great. Asante, what about you? Did you, did you feel that that hardship kind of was something that you really felt built into a success factor? Yeah, for sure. I've uh, more so from retiring from football, that in and of itself was a huge hardship. And it's funny that, the podcast that I came on just to kind of just talk about my football journey has been the new vehicle for how I'm trying to get to a new level of success. But yeah. uh, 
that that's great. That that's great that you found it. So it's so it's therapeutic and and success finding in its own process. I love that. You know, I think this is something that was really eye opening to me at the event was, is that it, and it happens a lot here that I get a lot of podcasters who say to me, oh, I just need to get this one celebrity guest on my show, and my show is gonna make it, and I kind of go sit back and I try to try to hold my tongue and go, yeah, you don't really understand how celebrities work. Yeah. Um, because, because it doesn't matter how high profile they are. They don't always share stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't, it's not always this, you know, this just, I'm going to go viral and this is just going to all work out for me. I think that that's the same thing that I was, became aware of as I was sitting in and listening to some of the panels at the event, um, that, we don't really understand the issues that are going on when you retire from a sport, when you've been a local hero, but not a national one. Mm. And it, there's a lot of challenges and things that we just assume that, oh, you, gosh, Asante, you must have had a charmed life <laughs> because you were, you were a football star, right? You know, and that's not the case. And that struggle's real. Yeah. And most athletes end up going through it and – what I noticed through my own personal experience was that the transition is the most difficult part of being athlete. And it's the one aspect of it that's never really made. Um, no one ever really talks about it and you just find out on your own and everyone deals with it in a different manner. So I love the, what I love most about our podcast is that we get insight into other people's transitions and there's like we said there's value in the journey but figuring out how one person was successful in one arena and then what was their next step to get to this new level of success and what was their pivot and what was that what triggered that moment for them i hope you find your own in the process i like that craig did you know it's an interesting match between the two of you but i've seen this actually again and again because i belong to this organization called fuel which has a lot has to do with anyone who services sports um industry in general and i see military and law enforcement tying together with sports um figures all the time especially in their retirement Mm -hmm. And I think there's got to be some similarities of what you go through. Is it because you had team, you had different support, and now you're kind of out on your own and it feels... Yeah, 100%. It, it, it all comes back to that whole community thing. Is like you have a community that you serve. And whether you're an athlete or you're in law enforcement, you, you have that community. It's about, you know, giving back and it's about that brotherhood and being part of a team. And uh, I think that's one thing that we can, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, we talk about this all the time. It's like, we're very different, but the more that we do these podcasts and the more that we talk to people, we realize we're very similar in a lot of what we do. And a lot of our, our backgrounds, whether it be athletics or law enforcement are very similar journeys, mm -hmm. you know, and some people, you know, go through transition, especially when you retire from law enforcement, some, it's difficult to, to do something that you've always thought you were going to do. And then now transition to another part of your life. And the one word that kind of is very comparable to both is identity. And it's like you have an identity, whether you identify yourself as an athlete or as a police officer, you've been part of that identity for such a long time. It's hard to see yourself in a different space. <laughs> time to identify as podcasters, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is our new, this, this is our new space. Well, trust me, there's a big community here. So we've got a lot of that going on. Um, there's, uh, you know, that's part of why how we met. Um, there's a podcaster network going on. There is um, new podcast events popping up everywhere. There was just one in LA. There'll be one in Orlando in a couple of weeks. And there's one in Dallas in the summer. So there's lots of that going on. So now you have a new community to tie into and lessons learned. So I'd love to know some things that you found either really difficult about launching and setting up your show and um and or recording like what did you find the most cha surprising challenge for you wow that's a really good question um the most surprising challenge you know it's kind of like it's it's when you don't know uh when you're learning something new it's very hard to gauge whether or not you're moving in the right direction mm -hmm. so it's like when you're starting something new and you haven't done this before you kind of try to look for any resources to try to tell you whether or not you're moving in the right direction. And sometimes that's really good. And sometimes that could be really bad depending on the source of information and what you're getting. And I think that has been probably the most challenging. I think the most challenging two thing is, is growing the podcast. 
you know, it's just like being able to figure out what it's going to do to grow and to, to hopefully extend your reach. And that's been um, a lot more difficult than I ever thought it was ever going to be. Well, you're not alone. I think that's probably the most common problem. And it's why everyone's out there reaching out and finding other things. But, you know, we talk a lot about what I call vanity metrics, um, that you've got the metrics out there to say, I have this many listeners. Woohoo, look at me. But actually, that's not the sign of a great show. That's not the sign of great conversion. And most people don't realize that. And, and it can only comes from having done this again and again, that I can see that you, of course, are in your bubble of only having one show. So you don't have that same experience. But your, your show is growing. It's just growing slower than you expect. Yeah. And that's frustrating. Yeah. And you know what? As a new podcaster, when you're out there doing research, you see people post numbers about how many downloads they get. And you see, you hear about things like um, for new podcasters, maybe the new and noteworthy part of Apple Podcasts or, or like these, these goals to achieve. And, you know, it's kind of hard if you're, if you're, uh, if you're an aggressive person and you want to just be out there and you want to crush it immediately, like from a positive perspective, like you want to go out there and, and be the best podcast that you can possibly be. You know, you it's you want to do everything you can do possible, but it's hard sometimes to swallow that pill of like it's going to take time and it's going <laughs> to consistent, repetitive, consistent, repetitive effort. You know, over and over again, and um, and you, it's just like, you know, I had this metaphor, Tracy. We talk about planting seeds and having a garden. You're not going to plant seeds and, and and put it in the garden. And the next morning, you're going to walk in and see tr a tree planted there. It just takes time of planting seeds and watering them and getting the direct sunlight and, and doing it over and over again. And you're not going to see a lot of that growth that's taking place underneath. You know, eventually you're going to start seeing growth, but the growth is small, right? You're not going to see a tree. You're going to see little buds. And then eventually it gets to grow and grow and grow and then develop strong roots. And yeah, it's really good. You know, I have a really good friend, Michelle Young, um, and she's, she's still trying to get her podcast launched. Um, but she... She says also that it is a, it, even the best gardeners have a bad season. So it doesn't matter how good you are at that. It's always a, it's always, you know, up to God, up to nature, up to, you know, what, up to the universe, right? For it to be a great season, because more than just you planting the seeds go into that, there's weather, there's, you know, weather patterns, there's, you know, global warming, whatever it might be is going to happen and it can change the outcome. So that's really important to remember that it's you, that you don't take it totally personally at the end of the day, because there's a lot that's out of your control. Yeah, absolutely. Well, new and noteworthy is a really good example. Do not worry if you did not get on new and noteworthy, because it's not a measure of a great show. I've seen shows that are fantastically at the top of the list and new and noteworthy and a month later, no one's listening to it. Yeah. It just, yeah. you know, so it's not a sign. It's a sign of a great marketer. Maybe it's a sign of, you know, something you did really right out of the gate, but it's not a sign of a great show long-term and it doesn't lead to it having, you know, having something that people that's worth listening to at the end of the day. Yeah, and I, and I think for people who are podcasters out there listening and uh, yeah, it's not to get caught up in all of that stuff, you know, and just focus on really, and it, it all comes, one consistent thing, Tracy, about all the people we interview, it all comes down to your why. It's yeah. like why you do what you do. And you know what, when you're, when you're worried about whether or not you can be consistent with this or whether it's going to last, if you go back to your why, that will keep you moving in the direction you want to go with your podcast. Had you, had you ever thought about binge listeners before? Had never. it ever occurred to you that they might, that might, they might binge on your show? No, no, yeah. no, <laughs> not, not at all. Well, not think at about all. it. Think about it this way, Asante, that let's say someone else just retires mm -hmm. and remembers your show because so-and-so, you know, somebody was on a, was on it and he starts listening and he starts realizing that listening to your journey and, this, and the different thing, takeaways you're mentioning in each episode and the things that, questions that you're asking and the way that you're growing is a way for him to learn at a faster pace. So he goes back to the beginning of your shows and listens to all of them. Think about how many people you could help that way. Same yeah, thing for well, you, Craig, right? <laughs> and you know what's interesting too is that I'm glad you mentioned that because like our show, um, if you go back to like the beginning it's really is like a roadmap. 
it's a roadmap of growth. Like if you think about it, it's like you start off in the beginning just learning and your show progresses. You get more fine-tuned, you learn, you talk to different people. And then there's a, there's a difference between episode number one and episode number 60 something, but it's, it's, it's actually kind of just paints a picture for people looking at it saying, wow, look, I'm seeing these guys go through this transition. Like I'm going, I could go through this transition. It's okay to, to not be really sharp at something thing in the beginning that's expected and it's nice to see this incremental growth even though it may be behind the scenes it's pretty cool yeah, yeah it is yeah and then for me personally my growth was all in real time because we were doing a lot of episodes like back to back just me and craig talking so i've gone back and listened just to remember where i was at that point in my life so it's just the growth is always just steady and incremental but as long as you're um keep pushing forward, looking for more growth, then um, you'll eventually find the success you're looking for. So I actually tell you that I, those are some of my favorite episodes listening to the two of you talk. So definitely don't take that away from your repertoire of things that you do now. And again, I mean, I understand that you're get, you know, you're interviewing people and you're learning and that's part of the process, but also you two recapping together is, is an awesome mix. Mm hmm yeah, yeah. I, I, those are, are really our favorites because we get to be, and not that we're not ourselves when we interview, we, it's a little bit more of a professional. We're facilitating. Yeah, we're facilitating. But when we're, when we're just talking, you know, and having a good time, it, it, you could definitely, as a listener, I, could, I think you, you can see our personalities and it, and it definitely comes out in the, in the podcast. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I think, that's, I think this is the thing. We don't always set out to make a bingeable show, but when we have one, that's when we have a higher likelihood for success long term because it means that new people can find our show they'll listen to more episodes and that's actually where a lot of the growth comes so it's not just that hot celebrity who comes in and it goes viral because they shared it on tiktok or whatever but you know that's that's where the long term steady growth happens and that's where you end up with a really wonderful show that's of great value not just to you not just to your guests but to the listeners as well yeah, and, yeah. I, and, and I believe, I think we both believe in that. It's just, it's more important of really kind of developing those really good roots. And it's not about the, the viral thing. It's, and again, it's not about the vanity thing we talked about in the beginning, it's, as far as us. It's really about just the service and giving back. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just great. And being a student for ourselves, because we, we learn every time. Yeah. <laughs> I love uh, living in that place of learning. Well, let's talk about some learnings because um, that's a key factor here. We like to go over on the binge factor. We like to really talk about what it takes to um, do some of these five things that, um, that really make a show. And so let's talk about the five things. Um, what are some of the best ways you guys have found to book great guests? Well, a lot of the times we're using our personal network. We will get invited to something and we'll meet a person who has an interesting story and then we'll invite them onto the podcast. And then from there, we'll ask like, Hey, do you know anyone else that would you think would be a fit to come join us? And then from there, a lot of our guests have been booked organically, but then we got to a point where we started having people reach out to us, which was a new situation. <laughs> so yeah. 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 A hundred percent. And another, I think a really good tip too, is really over deliver for your guests. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's not about, you know, what they can do for you. It's really, I look at it as what can I do for them? You know, and they really become a part of our podcast family. I always tell them that I'm like, welcome to the white tiger family. Cause you've been on the podcast. Now you're part of it, but like whatever we could do, whether it's a promotional thing and so on and so forth. And you know what, there's going to be some guests that really kind of promote your podcast and they're going to be some that maybe just don't do it as much because of their schedules and they're busy and so on, but it's okay. It's just like, it's not about that. It's about really giving back to your, uh, to your guests and, and really it, it has, it returns itself tenfold. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, great. Well, what about some best ways to increase listeners? Have you found a listener outreach that's working for you yet? Uh, you know, I, I think the big thing too is, is, um, network, the network, the network is your net worth is such a huge thing because with the people that you interview and you're getting connected with their audience and then they're sharing your podcast with mm -hmm. their audience and then their audience is enjoying what you're doing. And then they're sharing, it's just like, it's like it, it branches out like the, the, the branches on a tree. I mean, just, you start with one and it, it just parlays into a lot of other things. So yeah, definitely. Uh, have your guests share 
and, and it, whether it be on social media or through their own podcast or their own thing, just give you a shout out and share what you're doing. Yeah. How do you encourage engagement with that community that you're building? You know, a lot of what we do is social media based. You know, we do a lot of stuff with social media, reach out, and we're very personal when it comes to the platforms that we use. And I think that has been a really good way to connect with the people that find our show and or the people that have been like our loyal followers because you're really there you're not you're yeah, not a team really here. Yeah. like we're really here we're we really answer your your questions and you know we really do care and want to give back because again and, and that's one other thing too is really thanking making an intentional point because you mean it to thank your listeners like thank them for their time yeah. that's a resource they can't get back you know, they're dedicating that hour, whatever it is, half hour for their commute or whatever it is, they're not getting that 30 minutes back. And uh, we feel very honored to be able to get that from our listeners. And, and we're going to do whatever we can take to give, you know, say thanks. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. What about producing in a professional way? Did you set out to have a production plan? Did you use special equipment? And is there anything that you did that you said, I really want to do this in an intentional way? You know what? I, all I could say is, is that I have a master's degree from Google University. So <laughs> I'm really good at researching stuff on YouTube. And to be honest, I, we, I mean, winging it for like the first uh, good portion of episodes. And just like any probably new podcaster, you try to find the, like a resource that seems pretty like genuine and valuable. And you research a bunch of different, because you, you, you cannot not find them. They're all over the place mm -hmm. if you want, as far as equipment and technology and programs to use and you just learn and you just do and you learn from the next experience. And, and that's really kind of like the best advice I could give as far as the technology side of this thing. Yeah. The equipment has definitely grown and changed. Oh. <laughs> yes. So you started with something and then you shifted over time yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sold, I bought some stuff. I sold some stuff. We've upgraded <laughs> here. We've got some things on the, on the back burner we want to upgrade to. So yeah, it's always a constant process. You know what? It's so funny. We have a whole bunch of episodes we've done on, on equipment and the, the, there is a set of podcasters who come come in and they overbuy and yeah. they don't realize that that sometimes the professional equipment in the wrong environment doesn't work well and so they really should have just gone for the cheap thing to begin with and it would have been actually better for them and so there, there is that kind of thing over time is that you really got to know what your show is what your environment is get used to that and then upgrade the equipment to the right thing yeah, and you know, one thing, Tracy, one I've learned is that the most expensive equipment is not necessarily the best equipment. You know what I mean? I think you're, it's easy to do some research and to see other big podcasters out there using certain microphones and certain things, thinking it's going to best suit you. And that is not the case. At least in my experience, I found that you can get some really good quality out of some maybe not as expensive equipment and microphones and whatnot and really produce a show. I mean, the, 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 the value is in the content. You, you do obviously want to make sure that the audio sounds correct and it's just and it's pleasurable for, to listen to from an audio perspective. But you don't need to go out and buy like the, the top of the line stuff and the overbuying thing I could totally see. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Well, what about ways to monetize i mean you didn't start out with a business plan but you're in it almost a year are you thinking about what that looks like for you i feel like this has been a new focus as after like the miami trip it's been like okay how can we really grow this in a way to where we can just keep maximizing our reach and now we're finally uh um, yeah getting into that. and you know what's interesting too is that because we started this with not like a business mindset in mind as far as like funneling people to a certain program or a certain thing it's kind of weird to to actually think about making money podcasting but you know what when you think about the time and effort and that's a lot of things people don't see is there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff when it comes to posting stuff whether it's uh editing podcast it, it takes a ton of ton of time and when you don't know what you're doing it takes double the time Right. You know, so it's really, really hard. So the monetizing thing has almost become like almost like a necessity to keep the wheel turning. And uh, we've definitely have more of a focus on that now. But, you know, we're really still newbies in the game. Yeah. You know, and I think it's a also a consideration at your stage is like, do you go for the advertising model? Do you do something that's more, um, you know, event focused on your own or, or some of your own programs, as you put it? Like it you know, does that interest you? It's a, it's a decision. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a lot difficult. It's a lot more difficult than I think many people would think it's hard because 
it's hard to want to, um, to ask your listeners for stuff. You're so used to giving. It's hard sometimes to ask. And we often find like we're two guys that don't like to ask for anything. You know, it's like it's hard to ask for favors. It's hard to ask, you know, people for things. And it's, it's hard enough sometimes to get people at the end or the beginning of a podcast to say, hey, can you subscribe? Can you leave a review? Can you rate our podcast? Can you share it with someone that you know would get some value out of this? And that sometimes is hard. But, you know, I think for anyone that's listening, that's a podcaster and you're thinking about monetizing, do not feel guilty that you want to monetize or that you want to bring some value back to your podcast. If you could take whatever you're getting out of it and funnel it back in to create more value, then I say go for it. <laughs> I love that. Well, you guys were mentioning being on social and being you guys on social. Where, what are your favorite social channels? Where are you? Where can we find you? Instagram is definitely the main uh, point of focus for us. Uh, that's it's been the most fun way to reach out to people and it's mm -hmm. engaging and everyone's on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you guys are also on TikTok. Yes. Yes. So TikTok. But that's an unusual choice. What, what made oh, you guys yeah. decide? Do you want to tell that story? <laughs> I want to hear that story. <laughs> so I think me, I have like this like uh, infatuation with Gary V, just like everybody else does, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. So Asante and I are, are, are here in Southern California and we went to ComplexCon, uh, which is in Long Beach. And for like those sneakerheads and, and streetwear guys, gals out there, you, you know what ComplexCon is. So we were there as fans, but Gary V was there. And he was representing K-Swiss in his sneaker line. And we had an opportunity to, to talk to Gary. And um, Asante had this unbelievable sit down with Gary, which was unbelievably awesome. And we got a chance to, uh, to talk. And Gary's a big proponent of TikTok. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I, I, I love his content. And I take away the nuggets that he gives out. And, uh, like, listen, we want to expand. We want to try to reach out to as many people as possible. How can we do it? And TikTok was an avenue to do that. Well, and see, that's the thing, you know, Gary masters a, a program and moves on to the next thing that's hot. Right. And he's always on that tipping point of what's hot. Mm -hmm. And, and also he's, you know, such an influencer that he also can make it hotter. Yeah. Right. And so that's, a, you know, that's also something in and of itself, but you know, this is one of the little things that so you guys mentioned Instagram, Instagram TV is highly underutilized. Yeah. And it, especially by podcasters and video casters, Gary Vee is one of the few who's constantly there. Yeah. And, he, and he has translated that into huge sales for his, uh, well, I'm a little critical of his sneakers. I think they're kind of ugly, but that's, I'm a designer <laughs> and I've been like, so I've, I've been known to call his sneakers out as ugly sneakers, yeah. but you know, and I would say that to his face. I mean, I've met him before. Yeah. It's not like, that. <laughs> but it, you know, but it is, it's the case. It's like, it's not my cup of tea, but there are lots of people on Instagram who want to buy them. And they've done that because he's been able to parlay all of the content he creates there. And he's one of the few who utilizes stories really well, Instagram TV really well. Some of those things that are a little harder to grasp and understand than just like my posting a picture up. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, as a podcaster too, you almost, you, you kind of think like I have this audio content, like what else am I going to do with this audio content? Like, where am I going to, and you could utilize it in so many different ways. And that was part of like the learning process is realizing that you can repurpose this stuff. I think Gary is like totally a proponent of repurposing your content yeah. and you can repurpose it as a podcaster in so many different ways, whether it be transcribing your episodes or putting them up on different platforms and, and using Instagram stories and now TikTok and other stuff. So yeah, it's, it's been great. Well, well, good. So what's next for you guys? Where, where is White Tiger going to be next year? Oh, next year we will definitely be back at, we'll be doing more events. Uh, we're starting to do live shows mm -hmm. um, coming up in the next few weeks. Ooh, I like that. Uh, so we'll, we'll be at a coffee shop soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, we got a, uh, a collaboration that we're doing with Phil's Coffee here in, uh, in Costa Mesa, California. I know Phil's. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to be uh, appearing there. One, one, because they're just great people there. And we just love their, what they're doing at Phil's and, and their coffee. And their coffee <laughs> you know, just to really be really honest, good. transparent. Um, but yeah, they're, they're just really cool with uh, just spotlighting some really just cool local people doing some cool local things. So yeah, we're part of that. And, you know, I mean, for us, I mean, I think the sky is really the limit. I think we just want to have our reach uh, grow and we'd love to have our audience grow so we can impact more people, get more involved in the sports, uh, you know, mindset, success industries, and um, just deliver, deliver more value to people. 
Good. Well, you guys are well on your way. Everyone listening out there, the binge factor is so proud to get to know the White Tiger podcast, get to know Asante and Craig. This is just a a couple of guys who are really building a great show from the ground up, cranking it out every day and crushing it in a good way. So everyone, you want to want to check out the blog post for this episode at thebingefactor.com. Not miss anything about the show. Go subscribe to it on your favorite player out there because they're on all of them. And think about it. Think about how you can create a binge factor just like they have. Think about how you can create one that's humble, that has great learnings, that's progressive as you move through your show. That's what's going to attract the right listeners who are going to come and binge on you again and again and again. I'm Tracy Hazard from The Binge Factor, and I'll be back next time with another podcaster for you to learn from. Thanks. You've been listening to The Binge Factor Podcast. For more information on podcasting and video casting success tips and tactics, please go to thebingefactor.com. And be sure to listen to our other show for podcasters called Feed Your Brand. If you'd like to be interviewed on this show, as well as featured in Tracy's column, please go to thebingefactor.com slash guest and apply. 